The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let us pray. Loving God, may we hear as you declare each one of us beloved. Amen. Friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, uh, I was just at a retreat as a uh, board member of our camp, Christicon. And uh, the director, Pastor Mark Donald told a fun story. One evening a few weeks ago, a colleague of ours called him in the midst of her confirmation class. She wanted Mark to hear one of the students' answers to their question. She had asked the kids something like this, what is the good life? And one of her students said that the good life was like how she lived when she was at camp at Christicon. Pastor Seymour knew that Mark would like that story, so she had to call him from the middle of class. And Mark was more than happy to share that with us as board members. We are at the beginning of the season of Epiphany. And we might say that our readings from uh, last week and this sort of set the table for the year to come. Last week we heard that Jesus was given his name because he would save his people from their sins. Our belonging to Jesus names us as Christians, those saved by God in Christ and set free for the world. And today we hear the story of the baptism of Jesus. And That story, I think, points us out into the world as a people called and anointed as God's own children, baptized into Christ, whom God has declared beloved and true. What is the good life? That's quite a question. At at this uh, front end of January, we are looking at the foundations of who we are and all that we are called to be. It's interesting to note that in the story of the baptism of Jesus, uh, the fact that Jesus is baptized by John is something that makes the gospel writers quite nervous. In Matthew, we hear that John would have prevented him from being baptized, but Jesus tells him that doing so will, quote, fulfill all righteousness. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, I'm not uh, sure that that's a problem, Jesus being baptized by John. And I suspect many of you would agree with me. And I think that the reason we don't see a problem there is because we kind of understand the world through a gospel lens. That it does not mean that uh, John is greater than Jesus just to be baptized by John. Uh, We know that in God's reign in the world, it is not about who is over whom. Value is not a hierarchical thing. In the world in which we live, though, there are layers and layers of hierarchy, aren't there? There are leaders, and even our leaders elect leaders, however long that might uh, take. And then everyone go, I digress. Everyone, 
And then everyone goes to the leader of the leaders and talks to that leader for insight and leadership, huh? Our culture has it in all sorts of ways. There are those who are at the top of the food chain, the ones who get the best service, the preferred seats, the most honors. It is not like that in the kingdom of God. Value and worth are given by God and are lived out in service to others. Jesus is baptized by John, and Matthew tells us this fulfills all righteousness. Baptism of our Lord Sunday uh, begins Epiphany, and in many ways it sets an amazingly huge agenda for the year to come. The baptism of Jesus sets our sights on the good news that God has sent Jesus to bear God's love to the whole world and to transform life in this world, bringing God's kingdom of grace. As we look carefully at the baptism of Jesus, we find that God has sent Jesus to transform you in order to accomplish God's desire of loving the entire world. There's something powerful going on as Jesus is baptized by John. As they hear that voice that proclaims, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. It is foundational to the story of Jesus. It is foundational to who John and Jesus are. It is foundational to who you are as well. In the Gospel of Matthew, our Gospel that we are looking at mainly in this year, we all are insiders and know that we are in year A, that technical, ecclesiastical uh, term. And of course, I wouldn't use a sermon to make announcements, but on Wednesdays at Pastor's Noon class, we're looking at the Gospel of Mark and all are invited to join us any time, right? In the Gospel of Matthew, immediately after this reading, Jesus is led into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. It's interesting. We will have that text read uh, the first Sunday of Lent, the end of February, but we're going to touch on it right now for a little bit. When the temper, tempter wants to lead Jesus astray, he begins by asking him, if you are the Son of God. The tempter aims at Jesus' identity as God's Son. The tempter tries to go to the very core of who he is. If you are, as we begin the year, We are guided by our readings and we take note of the very core of your identity. For you see, miraculously, the same water that washed over Jesus has poured over you. And even more miraculously, these same words have been proclaimed that you are God's beloved with whom God is well pleased. David Loos, a preacher whom I quote often, has an interesting take on this story, on the tempter's question, if you are. I don't talk about this very much, but the church has an understanding of human uh, being human life, that we are all sinners who fall short of the glory of God's perfection. And one way of talking about that is uh, from the story of Adam and Eve and original sin. I'm not always sure that's always the most helpful way to talk about it nowadays, but so I don't use that phrase very often. But I know it's a true description of who we are and how Uh, things are Um, um, and so here I'm using it 
And so when we talk about that story with Adam and Eve, we talk about original sin. We, when we talk about our own uh, f- fallenness and imperfection, we talk about uh, original sin. David Lowe says he thinks we should take note that what precedes original sin is original insecurity. And I think that's deeply powerful. If you are, the tempter says to Eve, did God say that you can't eat any of the fruit? If you are, I think it's interesting here at the beginning of the year, early in January, that we recall the baptism of Jesus And I think you are called to recall your baptism as well. And most of us were baptized as infants, so we can't remember it, right? What's that great line someone said? Do you believe in infant baptism? The person said, believe in it. I've seen it. (laughs) But we also sometimes kind of wonder about infant baptism, right? And I like to remind you, whenever we baptize a little one, you're supposed to watch that and go, hey, that happened to me too. That's how you recall your baptism is by watching the baptism of Jack and Ruby or someone like that. If you are original insecurity, I think it's powerful. What's the... uh, um, line that people will talk about nowadays, imposter syndrome, right? Original insecurity. This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. To me, I think it's interesting to note that even Jesus needed that word of assurance, needed God to speak to his insecurity as well and to remind him of his belovedness, of his belongingness, of his belonging to God and his calling to be our Messiah. And so here on January 8th, towards the beginning of the year, let me speak this to you one more time. You are God's beloved The water and the word have washed over you and God has spoken God's claim. You are God's called one and now also you are God's sent one. And so may you with joy and faithfulness, fidelity and grace and forgiveness and love bear this great gift with you out of here and into God's world. Amen.